drawing perspective do's and don'ts. In today's video, I've got six examples for you. Welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Michelle. On this channel, you'll find all things watercolor as well as drawing videos like this one, even some business and motivation for artists too, mixed media painting as well. Please do consider subscribing. If you click that little bell icon, you can get notified every time I have a new video for you. Make at least one free video a week here on YouTube on a Thursday with extra content for Patreon subscribers. Now, lots of you have been asking me for specific examples of right and wrong perspectives. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to look at six examples. I'm going to show you the before. In other words, how your drawing might be looking when you're sort of looking at it thinking, well, something's not quite right there, but I don't know what it is. And then I'm going to show you how to fix those mistakes. Be aware that um, perspective, you know, it's not always about absolutes. There are, you know, specific rules. For instance, you could say, well, your eye line is always at the horizon. However, you know, this is not always true. You might be skydiving. You might be laying flat on your back in a sunny meadow. You might even be doing a spacewalk just around the International Space Station. What I'm saying is that these are examples of average things where you would be looking from an average viewpoint, perhaps standing or sitting with your head level. If it's at a more extreme viewpoint, for instance, I can show you something like a vase on a table, which is where a vase would normally be. But if that vase is on a shelf that's a foot from your ceiling, it is going to be different. So that's just something to bear in mind as we go through these examples. Don't forget to watch until the end of the video. I've got a bonus tip for you too. So your first perspective don't is don't line your windows up with the roof line. Now, while you're watching these examples, do bear in mind that there may be a slight tilt on the camera as well. I know you would all like me to film, you know, directly facing down, but that doesn't actually solve all my problems because then there's a tendency for me to lean my head in front of the camera. So doing my best here. So if I say something sloping one way and it looks a different way, just be aware of the slight camera angle. So I've got a bit of a house I've been drawing here. And I've got several things wrong with these windows. The main thing that's wrong with these windows is that they're lining up with the top of the roof. And we often think, well, where do windows go? I'll just, whatever they're closest to, if it's the bottom or if it's the top, I'll line them up along there. But actually the answer is fairly simple. Now we've got vanishing points here. So we've got two point perspective. So we've got one vanishing point here and another one here. Now it's gonna be likely off of your paper. In my case, it's right the way over here. You do not need to plot your vanishing points. You can just have a think about them. And you want to be thinking that within each of these lines, there are multiple other lines. So we're going up like this in lines of perspective. And the same, the other side, going from here, coming up until we get to here. Somewhere about here, usually on an average house, it's about a third of the way up. Somewhere around here, we have an eye line and the lines of perspective below the eye line will go up to the eye line and above the eye line they'll come down to the eye line. So we've got something like this going on. As I said, there's no need to plot it exactly, just have a rough idea of what it is. We've also got the problem that these should be getting smaller as they go away from us and you can see here that they're not lining up properly with those lines of perspective. They should also be getting closer together, narrower as they go away from us. So I'm gonna get rid of these. I have to draw quite heavily on YouTube so that you can see, so you will still be able to see the original lines. I'm gonna use pen some of the time. We're not going for neatness today, we're just going for you to understand the principles. So if we think of these multiple perspective lines, so we're at the eye line here, everything above is coming down to the eye line, and the higher it goes, the steeper it becomes. So when we come here, we're quite steep, but you can see that there's a slight angle on here. This is closer than this is. And if you look as far as going up to the roof, it becomes even steeper. Now, as far as the uprights, you can pretty much get away with doing those vertical. Now, there are occasions, and we'll be talking about one of those later in the video, there where are occasions where the uprights do not remain upright, but on a one or two story building, you're pretty much safe to do that. So I've got a set square here. You can just use, you know, you can do it by eye. You can just use something with a square edge, like a piece of printer paper. So I'm just going to mark some sort of, maybe even just mark one of the straight lines, just so that I can get an idea. So you see, there's a tendency for people to face, they know that those get smaller, so they sort of face them facing away, but these should actually remain pretty upright. So we've got a rough idea now of 
a line for the bottom, a line of perspective, and we've got a rough idea for a line of the top. We're keeping the uprights upright, so that's easy enough. And we're just going to get things a bit closer together and a bit smaller as they go away from us. I'll go over it in pen because we're getting rather a lot of lines here, so you can see the difference that it makes. So we've now got a proper placement for those windows. It does not need to be 100% accurate, but if you just get a vague idea of those lines of perspective, you'll get those windows looking a lot more realistic. We could do the same on the other side. So again, you know, we've got this one straight here, this one slanted, so we could sort of, you know, even without using any kind of ruler, I could just get an idea of how these lines of perspective might go. At any point along there, I can take some uprights and I've got a perfectly in perspective window. So wrong perspective example number two is if your river or pathway has any width to it where it hits the horizon, something has gone wrong. Let me show you and we can fix this issue. So here's a mistake that I see often. We've got pathway here, could easily as well be a river and it's going up to the horizon line and we've got some width here. Now everything should hit a vanishing point at your horizon line. Remember me talking about that being your eye line, which is in most cases true. So this should actually meet a point at the eye line. It should be disappearing onto the horizon line. Now there are occasions when you might see something like this. There would be a very, very steep hill and perhaps a steep drop the other side. You could imagine, couldn't you, if that was a river, it might be a waterfall on the other side, it'd be dropping down. But if this is just a pathway or a river going into the distance, you want to get it going a little bit more curved and you actually want to blend where it disappears into that horizon line. So let's get rid of this one. And what I'm going to do instead is just make that area where that path disappears into the horizon line almost, you almost can't see a join there. It just naturally flows round and we could have something, you know, a bit more like this. And you can see there, the curve of this path now, so we've got the line here and we've got the line here. We can't see a sharp corner where they join and there's no width at the horizon. And you see that straight away, you've given this a much more natural look. You don't get the impression that that pathway kind of goes up in the air and then drops off a cliff. If you're enjoying this video so far and getting some value from it, can I please ask you to click the like button? If you can click that thumbs up button for me, if you can share, subscribe, or even leave me a comment, all of these things help my channel to grow. I'm trying to get to 100,000 subscribers, and I'm so grateful to all of you who watch me on YouTube, who follow my painting journey, and share my videos. The next one is so, so common. There's just something about our brains that wants to draw the bottom of a jar flat because it's on a flat table. Our heads just can't get around it. The table is flat, therefore the bottom of the jar or vase must be flat, but this is wrong. Let me show you why. So here's our vase, and this is how people often draw them, with a circle at the top, and then they're flat at the bottom because it's on the table, isn't it? But let's think about that. If we tipped this vase up, there'd also be a circle on the base, unless it was a square vase. What I want you to do is a little experiment. I want you to find yourself a flat disc. You can cut one out of cardboard, or you can just grab some kind of uh, lid from your kitchen like this one, and I want you to hold it dead level with your eye line, and you'll notice that it almost looks like a straight line. You can't see any of the curve at all. As you lower it and it becomes lower and lower and lower below your eye line you'll notice that you see more and more of the circle appearing if you were looking straight down at it from above you would see the full circle and the same happens as it goes above your eye line as well but that's not something we have to worry about as much here because generally speaking if we're drawing something like a vase we're usually looking at it on a table, so we're usually looking slightly down at it. Now, as we've discovered, this, when level with the eye line, appears flat, and so the lower this ellipse gets below our eye line, the thicker it's going to be, the wider, the deeper the circle, the more of a circle that we will see. So if we imagine our eye line, so here's an eye, look at this absolutely splendid drawing here. So we've got a disc and as it's level with our eyes appearing flat, as it goes lower and we hold it lower below our eye line, we see more of the circle until when we're looking fully down at it, it's a complete circle. So now that we know that the lower below our eye line an ellipse is, the deeper it is, 
we must understand that this ellipse here inside this vase, the one we can't see, is deeper than this one because we're looking down at this one, but we're looking down at a much steeper angle at the one at the base. And so the correct way of drawing this one is to have a steeper ellipse. We can draw the whole thing. You'd see this if it was a glass vase, obviously. But we're gonna have a deeper ellipse there. So let's get rid of those bits that we can't see because this one isn't glass. And you'll see that now the correct way of drawing this vase sat on the table is with a curve like this. My next example of perspective that's wrong is that you shouldn't draw a building that's towering above you as getting wider at the top. Now, this is very instinctive. You look up and you think, oh, look at that huge building. It seems, you know, you should just draw it getting bigger as it goes up. But actually, the opposite is true. Let me explain it for you. So it's such a common error to think of a building as towering above us and being so big at the top. We feel like it's going to fall on us don't we, when we look right up at a building like that. Now, when we were looking at our house, we looked at those two points of perspective. We had one on this side, one on this side, meeting the eye line, the horizon line on either side. What we've got now is we've got a third point of perspective. And yes, there is a fourth point of perspective, but that's something different altogether. When you're looking up at a tall building, you have this third point of perspective. Now, that doesn't matter if it's a square building like this or it could even be a tower. So if we have a tower that's above us like this, a chimney or a lighthouse or something like that, then what we're gonna have is that these side lines slope inwards. And the same for this building here. What we actually need to do is slope our sides inwards. I'm gonna use a ruler because obviously I can't do a straight line today. So what would happen is these upright lines would hit that third perspective point as they go up. Again, it's not something that you need to plot. It's just something that you need to be aware of that a building that's above your eye line that you're looking up at will slope inwards. Now, of course, the house we did was partly above our eye line, wasn't it? So you could say that this house would slope inwards slightly, but because it's quite a low building, it's not gonna be enough that you will notice. But when you're doing a tall building like this, you'll get a lovely sense of perspective. You'll get a lovely sense of that building towering above you if you slope the sides in. Now, the next thing is something that I got wrong myself for ages when I was starting to learn to draw and paint, and that is either curving perspective or bending perspective or just drawing things that you shouldn't be able to see. So this one is important and it's all about working from life. And the simple rule is keep still, keep your head still, get yourself in a comfortable position and don't keep moving around. If you find yourself looking around things so you can see them better, you're going to be drawing from two different points of perspective on the same picture. Now, of course, there's nothing wrong. You know, there are artists that throughout history that have warped and bent perspective on purpose, but you may not want to be doing that if you're looking for a realistic effect. Another thing that can happen, and this happened to me when I was doing a garden painting, is you can be looking ahead. You can sort of look at the pots and the, you know, the flowers and things ahead of you, and then you sort of come down, you start looking down at the pots that are right by your feet. And if you do this what you'll be doing is curving that perspective and giving yourself multiple viewpoints let me show you an example i wonder if you've ever done this so i've drawn a post here and i can almost see both sides at once and that's not realistic now i want you to do another challenge i want you to find something square a post a square cabinet anything at all something that's not see-through so i'm not talking about something made of glass where you can look through and see the other side but something solid that has square corners so this could be square or it could be oblong it doesn't go for things that have more than four sides or that have angles on their sides but if you have an object that has right angles right angle corners you cannot see both sides at once. You cannot see round corners. You cannot see more than two sides. You cannot see three sides. So this is a common mistake here. So we start drawing this post and then we sort of, you know, we've, we've, we can see this side here and we're moving our head around and we're peering around and then we, we sort of move our head slightly to the other side and well, now we can see this side as well. And you end up with sort of like nothing up here 
makes sense. Now, when you are looking at a square object like this, and we'll assume that this is square or oblong, that it's not some strange shape, you can either see, you can see this main side, you can either see this side, or you can see this side, because your eyes do not look round corners. You cannot see both sides at once. So if you find yourself drawing something that's square, and you can see a bit of each side, then either the source material you're working from is wrong, or you're leaning to see if you can see things in a bit more detail. So a square object like this, you should only be able to see one side or the other, depending which side you are. I'm gonna assume we're looking at it from this direction. And because we're looking at it from the right, I can see this side as well as the front. I cannot see this side over here unless I walk around and look at it. So this is something to be careful of when you're working from life. If you start leaning your head around, you're going to give yourself multiple perspective points. So my next example is all about sloping water. I can't tell you how many times when I was teaching art classes, I would wander around and see somebody had done a nice flat lake and it was actually sloping upwards. Now water is heavier than air, it must lay flat in the landscape. Now the thing to ask yourself is, is the water under any force? Water must be under some kind of force or pressure in order to be moved. So this would be something like a waterfall, this would be a fountain, this could even be waves. Now if the water is not under any force, then it must lay flat in the landscape. Let me show you how to check and how to get this right. So there are two occasions when I see people sloping water. One is in the sea with the horizon line, and although you get waves in the foreground that may be up in the air, they may have you know big curves on, right out in the distance, you can't see that. So you need to keep your sea horizon lines flat. The other time I see it happening is when people have lakes and things, particularly in mountainous or hilly areas. Excuse me if you can hear noise outside. One of my neighbors appears to be having a kitchen delivered. Isn't that exciting? So what we've got here is we've got a little mountain I've drawn here and a bit of the edge of the precipice, something like that. And I've got this lake here, but it doesn't look realistic because what appears to be two sides of it are on an angle. So we've actually got this sloping here. Now water has to lay flat. So what I suggest you do is just get yourself some guidelines. So I've got a set square here, and we'll just take some lines across. So although things can go into the distance, they can snake into the distance, you always want to get that idea of the horizontal. So if you look at this here, what would be better doing, and let's get a pen for this, what we'd be better doing is following that idea of a flat horizontal line, and we'll end up with a body of water that's laying flat in the landscape, rather than one that looks like it's going uphill, which of course is defying physics. At the beginning of this video, I offered you a bonus tip and here it is. And the bonus tip is to not always trust your source material. Of course, if you're sitting outdoors or if you're working from life, if you can just accurately draw everything that you see without moving your head around, you will get your perspective correct. You don't even have to understand it as long as you just copy what you see. However, if you're working from a photograph, lots of things can be wrong with photographs. Lenses can bend and warp perspective. Photographers too can mess around with Photoshop and things like that and change the perspective of your picture. Another thing that can happen, and I am not here to call out other YouTubers, I would never do that at other teaching artists generally, because I'm sure I'm Make enough mistakes myself but just be careful don't take a tutorial that you're copying as you know absolutely 100% you know all artists have things that they're better at teaching they may be better at teaching color mixing they may be better at teaching loose painting not all of them are 100% on perspective I have a Facebook art group which you are willing to join and I've seen lots of people put you know they go through phases there'll be a tutorial that's making the rounds you know it might be a Christmas tutorial it might be a summer tutorial it might be a landscape tutorial 
told by some well-known teaching artist doing the rounds everybody all of a sudden you know you've seen this happen for about six weeks everybody seems to be painting the same picture and sometimes I've looked at people's paintings and thought well your perspective doesn't seem right and what I've done is I've gone back to the original and often it's the artists that give you like downloadable sketches that you can just trace them across I go back to the original and sometimes the perspective is wrong on the original now as I said I'm not calling out those artists we all have our weaknesses and our strong points but if you're looking at a picture and something just doesn't seem quite right if an artist has told you this is the way it's supposed to be you know even if it's me anybody at all and you just like you just think oh is, is that is that quite right do investigate and do a bit of your own research perhaps you know look on google and find pictures of similar buildings similar objects and see if you can figure out what's going on because i have seen mistakes in tutorials even by top artists and some artists here on YouTube and some tutorials in magazines. No human being is 100% perfect, which means that no art tutorial is gonna be 100% perfect. So if you're looking at a particular art tutorial, you think something might be a bit wrong, could even just be a typo, of course, let that artist know, but also make your own decisions and don't always trust your source material. Sometimes as well, it can be that professional artists have used photographs where the photographer has done something with a wide angle lens and so they've got that wrong from the beginning. Make your own decisions about your own artwork. Let me know in the comments if you had any aha moments whilst watching this video and if you've learned anything from it. Don't forget to check out the video description before you leave this video. I have lots of free stuff in there for you. I have a little free mini course that you can take. I've got free downloadable art PDFs and you can also find out about my Patreon subscription service, my Facebook group and everything else I do online. If you enjoyed this video, I think you're going to enjoy one of my other drawing videos. You can watch that one right now.